And we are going to be reviewing Netflix's Bloodline TV show. Uh, it just popped up on your instant stream, so if you haven't checked it out, it's there. I believe 13 episodes are up already, so it's ready to be watched. Now, I only watched the first two episodes. I'm really going to be reviewing it on those first two episodes, but it's pretty good so far, and I won't I give any spoilers. Like, I feel like at this point, we, we've talked about a lot of the, the Netflix original shows, and they've been making so many. They've almost been making um, them, and, and Amazon have been making some of the most interesting new shows. Well, definitely lately, definitely yeah, coming yeah. out in the last like few months. But not, they've, not, they've made some good ones, much. PlayStation Network and their powers. But this yeah, is the really channels have been making some really good, um, really good uh, stuff. Yeah. Original content, like yeah. you know, more so than the than your your major networks. Well, it's it's kind of gone away from the major networks recently. Like you went to HBO and Showtime, and those guys made a lot mm -hmm. of cool stuff. And now we're seeing it go to the streaming sites. It's just they have less restrictions. You can make more like movies, and I mean, kids shows are always going to be out there, but these Netflix are like even TV shows more making for kids adults. Soap shows too. Like, yeah, that's true. Uh, I saw they King did Julian. A Richie Rich one. They did a, a Richie Rich one, and it looked pretty bad, but it looked like the standard fare of, you know, kids live action. Well, I do want to see the King Thomas Julian show. one, the Madagascar guy, the lemur. Yeah. Uh, he, he looks pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So this, this story, Bloodline, it's about a family. Um, they live in Key West, and I guess Key West is a little bit off out there because it's all pretty much islands connecting each other. And it's about four kids, two parents. The two parents have been running uh, a resort per se. You know, they have bungalows and stuff. They, they run it for the past 45 years. And they're having a pier dedicated to them. So it brings the whole family and some, and some guests together. And that's where everything starts. Now, the actors, uh, you have Kyle Chandler. Um, if you don't know him by name. He's the guy who was in Friday Night Lights. He was in Zero Dark Thirty. He's been in a ton of things, so you'd see, you'd know him by face. Um, then we have Linda Cardell. Uh, she was in Freaks and Geeks, the TV show. Uh, she was Thelma from oh, Scooby Doo, yeah. and well, she was yeah, also she in. She was Grandma's actually really movie. good in Freaks and Geeks. Uh, that's one that I had only seen a little bit in the past, but uh, went back and watched recently the whole series. That's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah, and, and she, she, she does a well, good job in most of her roles. Um, then you have Sissy Spacek, uh, who's actually, she's an Oscar winner, and she was Carrie from the original Carrie movie. Oh, well, um, the and original one. That was the like original. a while ago? Like uh, ago. 30 years ago. Yeah. And she's been in a ton of things. That's just the most knowable one that I knew, at least, when I was looking her up on IMDb. But when you see her again, that's one that you've seen pop up in a lot of different things. And then you have Sam Shepard. I, I can't really remember what he's been in. Uh, he's been in a bunch of things as well, but the voice sounds so familiar to me, and he's actually really, really good in this part. So, um, so yeah, so the family comes together. Everybody is kind of having a good time, and you have the three kids which live there or live around there. One of them, you have the oldest is actually Sam Shepard. He's kind of a burnout. He's the black sheep of the family. He's the one that always got into trouble. They kind of hint to some sort of tragic event happening in his past that might have made him that way and so he screws up a lot and he's always asking for the family for help and one brother in particular the next one down is always coming to his rescue they they make that very known throughout the the first show um he's, he's a burnout they show him doing a lot of drugs and stuff and at one point he's coming home he's on the bus ride there and then all of a sudden he gets off two stops before the bus is at his place and he's going to turn around and leave and then decides to come back. So it's just one of those things he's not sure if he wants to come in, especially the narrator, who is actually the second oldest son. Um, he actually talks about whenever his brother comes out into town, it's like a black cloud rolls over. He always knows something bad is going to happen. So they kind of really hint at him coming is going to be the catalyst of the events of the show. Uh, then, okay, so you have the second oldest. He's the sheriff. He's the reliable one. He's the peacemaker of the family. He's always going back and forth between them all, trying to get them all to get along and, you know, kind of really connect because the oldest son and the father really don't have a very good, you know, relationship there. Then you have the second... Uh, I'm sorry. Then you have the daughter, who's actually a lawyer from Tallahassee, I want to say, so up north a little bit. She she likes to have fun. She seems to be, you know, the one that's responsible, though. She can relax, but she also knows how to take care of things. Like, an event happens, she has to take care of the family business while her parents are indisposed. The family business. Yeah, the, the, the resort. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what it's really about, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Or, and then you have the youngest son. He's kind of the hothead. Uh, he's always flying off at the oldest brother. Uh, I remember one scene, he goes over and, and asks his sister, hey, can you set an extra spot? I want to invite a date to this big family dinner we're having tonight at the resort. A date. Yes, a date. <laughs> um, to I want to invite... Business. I want to invite somebody to this this family dinner. Can you set set her a spot at the main table so she can sit next to me? And so the younger brother runs over. No, you're just trying to mess things up. She's not allowed to sit there. Only family's allowed to sit there. And he goes off on him, and he just wants. Looks like he's rearing to fight at almost all times with the older brother. So, you have a very interesting dynamic between the brothers and the sister, and it, it, it leads to a really good show. I mean, it's just it, it's been. Amazing. I was up last night deciding whether I should start the horrible movie or do the one-hour show, and I was tired, and I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'll watch the one-hour show, then I'll go to bed. Well, it was so good that I had to keep watching, and I, it took everything I had not to hit the third episode because it was there, and it was just like, oh, man, they left it on. Uh, every episode starts with these weird flashes. You, you see a bad something happen, and then they kind of flash to it throughout the show. In the very first episode, one of the first things you see, well, after a little bit of an intro, is the younger brother, I mean the middle brother, carrying his older brother, who looks like he's either dead or unconscious, through a storm, um, and he carries him over to a boat. But they just do little flashes here and there of it, and then they show you, boom, here's the big event. So it, it's a very interesting way to tell the story. Um, I haven't quite seen any TV show quite like it. You can see it in movies here and there because they're a little bit longer, but it's a really interesting way to tell the story. It's very well written. Uh, you believe what they're saying. You believe that this is a conversation that real people might have, and you believe the family dynamics. So that's another thing that you don't always get. You don't always believe what's happening. Like most TV shows, like people don't talk like that. It's like you're just making stuff up. You can uh, perhaps like our like our horrible movie earlier the the western yeah. cliches. Yes, yes. People don't talk like that. Actually. People don't talk like that. And in this show, people really talk like that. Hey, how? Wow, how'd you do that? Um, so all in all, I really really enjoyed the show Bloodline. If you have Netflix, you should check it out. You'll see the end of the first episode, and you'll be like, damn, i got to watch the second episode. And then you'll see the end of the second episode and be like, damn, i got to watch the third episode. So don't start watching late at night because you will want to watch multiple shows in a row. It is one of those binge-watching TV shows. So I'm going to... Netflix is pretty good for that, to be honest. Like yeah, They, they do they really a lot are. of those. They really so. are. And so I'm hooked. I'm definitely hooked. I do want to watch, continue watching episodes. Probably after the show, I'll watch another two. Um, so... Uh, it is definitely worth watching. So I don't know if I can rate it yet because I'm only two episodes in. But if I was going to rate just the first two episodes, I'd give them a 9 out of 10. Um, maybe a 9.5 out of 10. So watch Bloodline. It's on Netflix. It's awesome. And if you've already seen it, hit me up. Let me know. Comments down below. At Where's My Face on Twitter. Google Plus Facebook. No spoilers, please, because I'm going to watch it myself. And Brendan, does, does that interest you? <laughs>